I just want to give a quick update on where I am with my JD Garage plasma cutter. Uh, I've been using it pretty extensively to cut some stuff out. Uh, just recently I cut some peppers out for a chili cook-off sign that I made. I'll try to attach that sign, the finished sign here. Um, but I wanted to talk about a few of the changes that I made. And I'm sorry about the lighting work in the garage and it's kind of compact in here. And I've got a lot of scrap metal. A lot of scrap metal that I'm bumping into as we speak going on here. Um, I've had some fails early on. This is one of my first cuts here. It was a fail. Um, I've had some successes, some good successes. I've made some modifications to the whole system. One of the uh, major modifications that I made, uh, and I think if I did it again, I'd actually add this to the original design, is this top plate here. Um, that goes around the motor. I added this piece of metal onto it back here <clears throat> Which if, if I knew about it ahead of time I was gonna add this I would just have gone ahead and made that extra piece on there anyway This gave me the ability to add this adjustable uh, Light this is this is a clip-on light that I took the <clears throat> Metal part that bends off and this lets me get my wires up and Away from the system not hanging on it from the back motor uh, I don't know that I'll be able to fit the front motor from the Z-axis on this, but I can at least, it'll be up higher and I'll be able to strap it to this piece and come up and it'll be above all these uh, er, belts. So that is one change I've made. It was a simple change, very, very simple. Just cut it up a piece of metal and screwed it back down on top of that plate with the screws that were already in there. So that was simple. Another change that I've made, and it's going to be hard to see because the light's pretty poor out here. Uh, is this front holder here uh, for the plasma cutter. And I'm using the same plasma cutter that JJ's Garage uses right now. And that is the Lotus 5500D, uh, I think. The, I'll try to put a thing here that says exact one I have. And maybe a link on where I purchased it on Amazon. I had to remake this whole bottom piece because I made it out of PLA, a uh, printed piece, and it just kept melting. It was getting hot and... Uh, I guess because I was cutting things and the heat from the plasma cutter was getting up to the top here and it was heating it up. Could have also been that I kept undoing and redoing the threaded screw in the front of it and it was just the friction of it was causing it to bend and it just wasn't a good solid piece right here. So this front piece here that holds the plasma cutter in that bolts to the aluminum uh, plate there in the front didn't work. Another 3D print part that didn't work or isn't working for me is this piece here. Um, because I don't have the Z-axis, which you've probably seen over here I'm working on, because I didn't have the Z-axis, I'm constantly changing my height of my bar here uh, for my metal. And it, it just keeps cracking. Uh, next thing I ran into was this bolt that holds it in place. You, you you get into this piece of plastic here, and if you go just a little bit too far, you end up hitting this bar here. That The bolt goes through and hits the bar. And I had the most trouble with that. It was freaking me out. I kept squeaking and whining. I'm trying to figure out which bearings are going bad. and Is it the motor? Is it something else? And I couldn't figure it out for the longest time because it was just touching this bar here. You can probably even see the scrape mark. It was just touching the bar because I went through too far. And I could, it took me forever to figure out that that bolt was causing the problem because sometimes I wouldn't tighten it all the way fully tight and it'd be fine but then I'd tighten it too tight and it'd be tighter and it would hit it but I couldn't figure out what it was so that bolt being too long is a problem I've added I've added some washers in here now that makes it a little shorter and and in the beginning it was fine but as this piece right here started to break and I had to tighten a little more because I didn't replace it uh, that's when it got bad so original form, it wasn't a problem. But as I tightened and tightened and kept crushing that little piece and breaking it, it got worse. So this piece, I think, should be made out of metal. This uh, 3D printed part right here should be made out of metal, which I will go back and do next. Uh, well, no, I won't. I take that back. I may not because I'm switching to the Z-axis. And I don't know if I'll be undoing it and doing it again with Z-axis control. So, But it'll have to move from here to the front of this thing when it gets done. So I'll have to make a new one regardless. Whether I 3D print it and try it again or just make a metal one, it's a pretty simple piece. So we'll see. Um, what else? 
um, water table that they suggested in the video. Great water table, it works great, but look at this. This thing is so close. Uh, it, 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 there's a fingernail in there, and sometimes it actually hits it. And that is not because the table is in correct size. Uh, actually, this it's pushed up against this bolt right here, which holds this whole thing together here. That bolt head is hitting it. I could file some off that bolt head if I wanted to, um, but that that's all right. I'm not going to because it fits. I think what it is, and maybe you can see it. And it's not fish eyeing, uh, but look at the bow, the bow of the with the water in here. I get bow on the uh, table. It bows out where the <laughs> so I think it's the water that's causing it to bow. And I'm really nervous that when it freezes in here, because it will, it'll freeze in my garage. Uh, it'll bow even further, and uh, I don't know what'll happen. But this rubs just so slightly. And to be honest, when I heard this scraping over here, I honestly thought it was hitting over here the whole time. Um, the other side of that is not now. Um, I have another issue that I haven't addressed, and that's why it's rubbing. I think in, in the first place. Um, I have to raise up this side of the table a quarter inch. I put a quarter inch piece of steel across this whole side of the table, raising this side of the table up a quarter inch from this side of the table over here. Uh, and that's probably due to uh, racking of the table with the legs. And I can probably fix that by adjusting my legs, taking this bar back out over here, and that'll drop this top of the table down a quarter inch, missing that altogether. So don't think you need to worry about that if you get your table level. And level's important because water will always go level. So if you don't have that right, uh, you'll see I'm actually still a little off. Look at this side over here. It's actually got more water. Uh, if you can see it, that side has more water than that side. So there's, this needs to be raised. Actually, it needs to be lowered a little. So yeah, I'm off. I could come down a little because this actually has, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I could come down. Maybe it's just settled in. I'm about a quarter inch there and I'm about a half inch there. So that's a good point. I will try taking that back out. Maybe the table was off and I just moved it around a bunch and it kind of settled in. But at first I had water running out the one side when it lipped on the other side. So I put this in here to try to level it out. And to be honest, eh, I think I'll take it back out. That's great news. We'll see where that gets me. Uh, because I have to take this whole system apart, apparently, to put on the Z-axis and redo... I'm not even pointing at it, I apologize. And redo these two bolts over here and those two bolts down there to move this whole rail. and back up so you can talk. Move that whole rail uh, two inches back, forward, forward. Because this new Z-axis that we're going to put on the front of here adds two inches. And then you'll have cutting space out here in front of it you don't need, which is wasted, right? And you'll have two inches less that you can come back because you're sticking further that way. Uh, meaning that, so, so you move that whole frame forward to get those two inches back. May or may not do it right away. It's two inches I lose. Mm. I haven't cut anything the full length of this thing yet anyway. Other things. Um, these pieces right here, these are the tensioners. Uh, plastic tensioner, 3D uh, printed plastic tensioners up against 3D printed plastic uh, uh, rubber, the belt holders. Not great. I mean, look, this thing is, it's not your camera vision. It's cockeyed. You tighten this and it just starts to twist that bottom one. Um, I would, I would almost try to make that out of metal. And I know that JD's made, garages made these out of metal. I, I, I think I'm going to switch to metal on these when I take it apart again and redo it. Same on the outside. I haven't had as much issue on the outside, on the outside ones, but, oh, this is important. The outside ones don't work. They're the wrong size. So if you have the original, and this is something that JD's garage, you guys can take into account for your 3D printed parts. The 3D printed parts work fine but they're not uh, long enough. They don't stick out enough. And what happens is this belt rubs right here and then down as this whole frame gets down towards the end, it rubs, just constantly rubbing right here. So I went back and reprinted these and gave myself, reprinted these and gave myself an extra half inch away from the table. I mean, you could do anything to set it up a half inch. You didn't, you could just put a block in here if you wanted to, but I needed to move it a half inch out. And so what I did, I just refashioned this piece and Tinkercad 
put another half inch on the bottom of it and that gave me the distance I ne needed to keep the belt off of the uh, rail. And again, I think JD's Garage made these out of metal for theirs, so it probably didn't affect theirs at all. Um, but it did affect mine. And there was a half inch of space here left for the belt to go down, but because of the way this 3D print's made, it can't go down in that part. Um, I forget what the reason is behind it, but it can't go down there. I mean, it can't go up. I'm sorry, it can go down, but it can't go up. And I can't remember why it didn't go up and I had to remake it. I think it had something to do with the way this is so tight and it couldn't get up inside here. If it could have got up inside there, it would have been fine. But that could be my 3D printer as well. I don't know. So, But something to keep in mind. But that was a big issue for me in the beginning was this belt was rubbing because it was too close to the point. This belt was too close to this frame with the original holders. So I gave myself more room. Didn't change anything as far as the functionality. Works great. Um, the cable that hangs off the back of this motor connection here, I just tie it off to that bolt there. I left that bolt long. I actually had to go back and put a new bolt in to make it longer. Put another nut on there and a zip tie. And that keeps it from just draping on the ground. So that's a good added little feature. Uh, other issues that I've come across, and these have nothing to do with JD's plasma cutting system, uh, is air. Uh, dry air is important when you're, when you're doing plasma cutting. Um, I've added an air system that dries. I got two dryers here. I guess these are uh, not dryers. They're water extractors or something like that. Those two are. This has actually got, uh, this is a water purifier for your house. And I've added a tube in the center so that the air comes in and has to go all the way to the bottom and then come back up. And the only way it can get to the bottom is going through a whole thing of desiccant. I actually use the uh, cat litter desiccant. Uh, it's unscented and it's just desiccant and they fill it. So there's a lot of desiccants in there. I can unscrew that pour them out into a metal pan, aluminum pan, throw them in an oven and dry them back out and reuse them. <coughs> they are not color coded though. So I have these on the end, which are just Harbor Freight specials that are color coded. And I'm sorry, I got too much stuff piled on. And when they get pink, you got too much water and they are now pink. So I have to take these back out and you can't take these apart and bake these because the way they're made, uh, that's probably on purpose, so they have to sell you a new one every time you want one. <laughs> I forced one apart, I broke it, and baked them, and they work just fine. If you can get them apart and bake them and put them back together, but to put it back together, I had to glue it. Uh, because you got, you know, so many PSI coming through this, if you don't have a good connection, it's just going to blow apart. So you can't... I run a regulator that runs... Uh, I want to say I'm at 80 PSI. So this whole system here is at 80 PSI. Before it goes around and gets down to my plasma cutter on the ground. And there's my plasma cutter. The model it, and I said I'd give you the model. That's the model plasma cutter that I have. And it works great because uh, it, got, it has the air pressure on top here. And then the jacks in the back to connect up to the torch. And the plasma cutter guide and all that. So that, that works good. I don't know the details about that, but JJ's Garage explains it pretty good. It's, in, it's impressive how well they got it all organized. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. And all of my computer stuff's in here. I'm not taking that apart. I don't know if I showed it in my last video. It is a standard Dell computer in there. Um, it, it's a bigger box, obviously. I have a switch for my computer power and a switch for my motor power. And I do that for a reason. And the motor power just uh, is a power switch to the power supply that sits inside this box that runs the motors and the Arduino. And I can turn that off and then I don't have to worry about my motors sitting in a hold position. Because when your motors sit in a hold position, like they, they don't, you can't move them when they're in that hold position, they get really hot, uh, both of them. Uh, I'm trying to think one more than the other. I think it's this one gets the hottest. And it, it's because it's constant hold trying to keep that motor from moving. And if you walked away and left it like that, you're gonna ruin that motor, just leaving it like that overnight. So I have a switch here. Uh, so when I'm going back in and doing some design work or doing something like that, I just turn the switch off. Uh, and then I just turn it back on when I'm ready to go again. And because it hasn't moved, if I, if I don't move it, 
Uh, the computer still thinks it is in the same exact spot, so you don't lose your XY necessarily. Not saying that's a good design that I do, but it does work for me. Ground clamp. I have forgotten more times than not to attach my ground clamp, and it has been my biggest problem with getting things to work. So remember to attach your ground clamp and find an area that you can scrape off the metal or whatever, the paint, so that you have a good connection. You don't need to take off any paint for the actual plasma cutter. It's fine. It can blow right through that. Um, most paints I haven't had a problem with. Uh, I've, do, I've done a lot of different types of metal. Powder coated metal. Eh. Very thin powder coated. I haven't done thick powder coated. But it it takes off the, right through that. But you got to have a good ground. So you got to grind that off with something, file it off with something, and attach that. What else? I know this video is getting a little long. Um, a couple other things that I'd like to mention is I use borax in the water. Um, don't know why. It's just something I saw. I do get some rust buildup. It isn't horrible. Um, it, it works. It does what I need it to do. I don't drain the water. I leave the water in 24-7, and I use it about once a week right now. Uh, as winter's coming, I'll probably have to drain it because, like I said, that freezing could get pretty hard in that... Um, thing in that shell and I don't want to get too heavy or break anything so I mean obviously the water could lift right out <clears throat> some of the items I've cut today or yesterday where I was cutting these peppers to make a chili cook-off sign you know I paint them up you know chili cook-off I actually messed this one up but you know I, I use a standard uh, five Trying to think if there's anything else I need to tell you. Uh, my compressor, sorry, messy garage, is a giant uh, Craftsman 150 PSI compressor, but you don't need that. Uh, I also have a littler compressor that I've used previously. It's just noise. It's a lot noisier, so I haven't used that one. And I've also used a standalone with no air tank compressor, and it worked as well. I used... Um, a very minimal air compressor that has no air tank in it and it's just on and off so it just creates air it runs all the time but it works so you don't need that much air pressure depending on what you're cutting because there are rules you know you got to follow a certain guide of how much pressure per the thickness of your metal that was something else i screwed up in the beginning i had too much pressure all the time and it was blowing the torch out so you got to make sure your pressures are right read your manual on that you got to follow the guide on the manual that's all for now that I've got. I might add some more if I can think of anything else.